Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the Targum of Jonathan. I'm going to show you that Nimrod was not a righteous hunter before the Most High. The Most High Judge, that is, okay? So this is the Targum of Jonathan. We're going to take a look at Genesis. And this Targum of Jonathan, for those wondering who this Jonathan is, well, he was a scribe during the times of Jeremiah during his Babylonian captivity. Here you see it says, Jonathan, a scribe, mentioned in Jeremiah 37.15 and other verses throughout the book of Jeremiah. He's mentioned a few times in the Old Testament. He was a scribe, meaning somebody that writes books. He was a writer of the Torah and Aramaic. That was the language during the time of Neo-Babylon during the times of Jeremiah. The Hebrews had the scriptures in Hebrew but there were some that didn't know Hebrew. They only knew Aramaic, the lingua franca at the time. Like in our day and age it's English, right? Everybody's learning English it seems now. So yeah, it says here that Jonathan was a scribe. This is Jeremiah 37.15. Turning back to the Targum of Jonathan, the scribe. Alright, we're going to skip down to page 15. Alright, here it is. Okay, here are the descendants of Cush. The descendants of Cush, or one of the descendants of Cush, I should say. Okay, this is the table of nations of the sons of Noah. And here you have the Hamites. Cam or Cam, and let's see here where are you at Nimrod? Okay, here it is. It's kind of small. I don't know if you can see it. See that? It says Cush, who begat Nimrod. Alright, I'm going to read it up to where the comma is. Alright, it says that Nimrod, he began to be mighty in sin and to rebel before the Lord in the earth. See, they don't have it like the King James Version. The Targum of Jonathan, the scribe, he has it written that he was a rebel before the Lord in the earth, not that he was a mighty hunter, so people automatically think that he was a righteous servant of the Most High Judge. Nah, he was not. But people get thrown off of because of how the King James words some of the verses, and they mostly all, everybody gets thrown off because of the false names of the Creator in the Bible and all the other scriptures. Lord, means Baal, pagan deity, God, is short for Satan's name. You know, but you wouldn't know this unless you dig for the information. So when you read about Nimrod in the book of Joshua, that God and Lord, you know, these titles of this entity that he blessed Nimrod, people will think that it is the creator. No, it's Satan. So... You wouldn't tell, you know, when it's talking about the Creator, when it's talking about Satan, you know. So things are blurry, but you need a lot of good discernment. It takes time. The more you study, the more you kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together in your mind and say, okay, if this doesn't make sense, okay, then you'll see that if it doesn't add up, then... You set it to the side until you get a clear view of what you're reading. 
because the creator is not the author of confusion, right? So Nimrod, it says here in the Targum of Jonathan, the scribe mentioned in Jeremiah, he began to be mighty in sin and to rebel before the creator in the earth. He was a mighty rebel again before the highest judge. Therefore it is said, from the day that the world was created, there has not been, as Nimrod, mighty in hunting and a rebel before the Creator. Just as you read in the book of Jasher, most wicked. From the time of Adam all the way up until the time of Nimrod. And even after that, I would assume. So this fool is probably more wicked than Cain. Unbelievable. Okay, so anyways. Yeah, it says here that the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Or Babel. Babel the Great. The kingdom of this reprobate. Alright, but that's all I wanted to share with you. Okay, so the Targum of Jonathan the Scribe is basically portions of the Old Testament written in Aramaic and then translated here into English. Alright, so that's the only little piece mentioned of Nimrod. Oh, no, no it's not. Hold on one second. Okay, let's see, what else can I share from this piece of work? Okay, take a look at this. I don't know if you can see it. It's another version of what we just read concerning Nimrod. He was a, he was mighty in hunting and in regards to sin before the Creator, for he was a hunter of the sons of men. Wow. Hunter of the sons of men and their languages. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Hunter of the sons of men and their languages. Okay, anyways, it says here that he said to them, he was telling the sons of men, leave the judgments of Shem. Oh, now here he's dissing Shem. He was supposed to be the one to hold the garments that Nimrod had in his possession. He's saying, don't follow the ways of Shem or the overseer of Shem, Yahuwah, and adhere to the judgments of Nimrod or to his judgments and his overseer, Satan. On this account, it is said as Nimrod the mighty, mighty in hunting and in sin before the highest. So, I'm not sure if it's saying that this fool hunted men. I assume he did. I'm pretty sure he did. I believe he was sacrificing men. But I don't know what is meant here by the sons of men in their languages. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So yeah, this fool was telling the righteous people to abandon the ways of Shem. Remember, Scripture says in Genesis chapter 9 that Yahuwah will dwell in the tents of Shem. So he's saying, yeah, don't follow Shem or the or his overseer. He's saying, follow me. So he was trying to convince people to follow his cult of reprobates. And yeah, he was a rebel. He was not a mighty hunter before Yah. He was not sanctioned by Yah. The other God gave him his power. The other Lord led him to 
take those garments from his thieving ancestor him all right so yeah you can read more about this in the book of Jasher, the bible and in this piece of work here and you can watch my other videos concerning nimrod and you'll get more insight on this fool all right